as did the Sputnik in 1957. In August 1955, the U.S. Department of Defense Committee on Special Capabilities teamed up with the U.S. Navy to place a man-made satellite in Earth's orbit by 1958. This project will later be known as Project Vanguard. The 1.4 kg spherical Vanguard satellites would be built at the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington. At the height of the Cold War, this program had big hopes to achieve something great and to put the United States at the forefront of the space race with the first artificial satellite orbiting the Earth. This meant a lot to the Americans. They wanted to show the USSR and the whole world who was boss. However, on October 4, 1957, the USSR crashed those dreams with their successful launch of Sputnik 1, becoming the first man-made object to go beyond the atmosphere and in outer space. Although Sputnik didn't do much, except sending radio signals back to Earth, the Americans were terrified. They were terrified because the USSR announced that the rocket that took Sputnik to space is also capable of taking nukes to outer space. Americans were scared of the idea that nuclear weapons could now start coming from above. Not to mention that this has hurt the US prestige. How can this happen? The idea that the USSR, the arch enemy of the United States, could beat them to space was unfathomable to most Americans. So. How did America respond? A launch pad was prepared on Cape Canaveral and the rocket that would lift America's response, the Vanguard TV-3 to space, was standing tall. The stakes were high and the whole world was watching. This had to go well, but it didn't. Only three feet above ground, the rocket came down crashing, setting the whole site on fire. This was another blow to American pride, adding salt to injury after Sputnik's spotless success. The public and the media went to a frenzy, labeling the program names like Flopnik. This had brought huge criticism to the American government, and to make people forget this failure, they now had to respond with something even bigger. On November 15, 1957, a month after the Sputnik launch, Premier Nikita Khrushchev gave an interview with an American reporter where he bragged about the USSR missile superiority. In this interview, he said that the US did not have intercontinental ballistic missiles. If she had, she would have launched her own Sputnik. He then issued a challenge to the US by saying, let's have a peaceful rocket contest, just like a rifle shooting match, and they'll see for themselves. Tensions were starting to get high. In 1958, Dr. Leonard Rifle, a renowned physicist who will go to occupy several high positions within NASA during his career, was approached by officers from the US Air Force with a straightforward question. Is it possible to detonate a nuclear device on the moon? The US Air Force wanted to nuke the moon and wanted to have a cloud big enough to be visible from Earth. This was the only way to show the USSR and the world the might of US military power and leadership in space. To answer this question, a top secret project was launched, Project A119, and Dr. Rifle assembled a 10-member team at the Illinois Institute of Technology to study the feasibility of this request, the science behind it, how much visible will the explosion be, and the potential implications on the Moon and Earth from such explosion. Dr. Rifle and his team embarked on a two-year research journey, at the end of which they produced a report in a form of a thesis entitled a study of lunar research flights that weighed the pros and cons of an atomic explosion on the moon. This whole project only came to light when the report was declassified in 2005. The report indicated that such explosion on the moon, which is geologically a silent body, would cause artificial earthquakes that will be felt in all parts of the moon. The dust from the explosion would have an unpredictable trajectory since the moon doesn't have an atmosphere to contain it. It would shoot straight into space. The report also highlights the possibility of rendering parts of the moon and colonizable in the future due to the radiations. But after the report was completed on June 19th, 1959, the project was abandoned without any further explanation. With the public already unhappy with the TV-3 launch failure, a crash from another rocket carrying nuclear warheads on American soil could push the public over the edge. Besides, the project didn't really serve any real scientific agenda. In fact, Dr. Rifle said in an interview with the New York Times in 2005, 
five, the foremost intent was to impress the world with the prowess of the United States. It was a PR device, without question, in the minds of the people from the Air Force. Not to say that the USSR didn't also think about the same thing around the same time. After the successful launch of Sputnik, there was American intelligence floating around that the USSR is planning to detonate a nuclear device on the surface of the moon. But to this day, there are no declassified Russian documents that could confirm this. In any case, humanity should rejoice that neither of these two superpowers went through with their plans. In 1963, the USSR, the USA and Great Britain signed the treaty banning nuclear weapon tests in the atmosphere, in outer space and underwater. Also, in 1967, another space treaty was signed in which future research into the effects of nuclear explosions on the surface of the moon was prohibited. Two years later, and in 1969, after the success of the Apollo 11 mission, putting the first man on the surface of the moon, the USA claimed back its spot as the leader in the space race. And this is a story for another time.